Hello and welcome to another Corona for Cinema 3D tutorial. Glad you've tuned in. In this one, we'll talk about the interactive viewport functionality. The interactive viewport can be a big time saver when you're working on your scenes because you can simultaneously navigate and edit a scene in your viewport all the while it is being rendered as you go on top of your Cinema 4D viewport. Now, to start the interactive viewport, you essentially have two options. One is to go into the Corona plugin menu up here and just click on the interactive viewport button. Give it a second or two to initialize, but before you know it, it'll be up and running. Now that's one option. The other, which I personally use more often, is to go under that same menu and instead of clicking on the interactive viewport button, you can click on this gear icon right next to it. That's going to bring up this menu, which settings we'll go over in more detail a bit later on. But for now, we're just going to focus on the start and stop buttons with which you can obviously either start or stop the interactive viewport from running. Right, now depending on how big your scene is, you need to give the interactive viewport some time to start up. But once it's up and running, you can freely roam around the scene and make your edits. So what does that mean? Well, essentially, I can, for example, go out of my camera here and perhaps select this pencil, move it around, rotate it, and as you can see, I can use the viewport as I normally would a regular Cinema 3D viewport, but now we have the Corona rendered image rendered on top of it. And what's really cool about it is that I can even go into a po polygon mode, for example, and select one of the polygons on our pencil here. And I can basically essentially model in real time here while the image is being rendered. And as you can imagine, this allows for a very, very interactive experience here. Right, so the usefulness of this functionality can be immense, although obviously for more complex or larger scenes than the one we're working with here, the feedback won't be quite as immediate because the scene needs to be parsed and the rays need to converge, which is how rendering works really. Now in those instances, or for whenever you'd want an even faster, albeit heavily denoised preview, you can try enabling the NVIDIA AI denoiser in the render settings. So basically, I'm going to go into the render settings under Corona, Format settings, and you'll see that we have this fast preview denoise during render button down here. Now, do note that this button is only available to you if you are using a fairly recent NVIDIA graphic card. So, I'll enable it here and observe what's going to happen in my interactive viewport now. So, the image gets almost instantly denoised, and this kind of allows for an even more interactive experience. Pay attention to this noise here, how it quickly disappears. But as always with denoising, until we have a more refined image, we kind of lose on a lot of the details. But the really great thing is that if you let the image render for a longer period of time, the denoiser will automatically update and you will just get a more refined image as time passes. Now the NVIDIA AI denoiser isn't exactly a miracle worker and it isn't suitable for every occasion and every workflow. That said, in certain scenarios, it can be quite beneficial. Right, so because this is an NVIDIA exclusive functionality, let me just turn it back off for the duration of this tutorial here. There we go. So now, just to clarify here a bit, if rendering speed is something you're looking to improve with interactive viewport rendering, another option is to resize the viewport window to something smaller because the resolution of the interactive viewport is tied to the size of the viewport window itself. Don't worry, we'll cover this method a bit later on in the tutorial, so don't feel like you're missing out. Now, since we are already talking about render settings, the interactive viewport is essentially an interactive renderer that works on top of your viewport. So what that essentially means is that all the main render settings that you set in your Corona renderer here, all these tabs, apply to your interactive viewport just as it would on the interactive renderer. So for example, if I were to switch um, my GI solver here from path tracing to UHD cache, pay attention to what's going to happen in the viewport here. Well, obviously now you can see that it updated and it's now using the UHD cache solver. And so again, the same settings will apply to the interactive viewport that apply to the interactive renderer. Now, in this case, because it's a really straightforward scene with not a lot of complex GI bouncing, I'll just quickly switch back the GI solver to a path tracing one, as that will make the interactive viewport refresh a little bit faster, as it doesn't need to calculate the UHD cache, which for this scene, we don't need anyway. If it was an interior, that'd probably be a different story and we'd probably want to stick to the UHD cache. 
Now at this point, just a quick intermission with a quick tip. Say for example, you wanted to use the UHD cache for your final renders, but for the interactive rendering, you'd prefer to run it in pure path tracing mode in order to maximize the interactivity. Well then, in that case, you could set the GI solver to be set to UHD cache, and then you would go under the performance settings here and tick force path tracing. With that done, you're now telling Corona to use the UHD cache for your regular rendering, but for any kind of interactive rendering, you want it to use path tracing instead of the UHD cache. Hence, you're forcing the path tracing mode for any kind of interactive rendering. So now you don't have to switch between the GI solver modes here whenever you're optimizing the interactive render for better interactivity. Keep that in mind, it's a useful tip. Right, so these were the main render settings that we just went through. That being said, if you go under the Corona plugin menu again and click on this gear icon again, you'll remember this menu from before. Well, this menu actually contains all of your interactive viewport specific settings. So let's quickly go through these, shall we? So the first on the list is the viewport user render view option. And if I go into my quad view here, you can see that we only have the interactive viewport running in this one viewport window and not any of the others, right? Well, why is that? It is like that because we have the interactive viewport set to be only running in the viewport window that is being used as render view. So if I go under view here, you can see that we have the users render view option ticked for this viewport window. And so if, for example, I wanted to have the interactive viewport be running in this viewport window, well, then I simply need to go under view here and click on users render view. And now, as you can see, this one stopped running the interactive viewport and this one started running the interactive viewport. Right, and so this is pretty useful, but sometimes a little cumbersome if you do want to switch the interactive viewport between the windows a lot. And so in that case, what you want to do is you want, you want to switch from use render view to use selected view. And so what this is going to do is essentially, it's going to have the interactive viewport be running on your selected viewport window or better yet, your active viewport window. So essentially, if I click anywhere in this viewport that is currently not being uh, used for interactive viewport, uh, well, you can see that the interactive viewport is going to start up here. And conversely, if I now click anywhere in this viewport window again, well, now it's going to be running here and not here anymore. So this means you can easily have the interactive viewport be running on whichever viewport window you're currently working on. That being said, sometimes you do want to lock it to a certain view, and for that, you just need to click this lock view button here, and now it's going to lock it to this window, regardless of whichever viewport window you're working with here. Right, next up we have the alpha mode option, and the alpha mode, essentially what it does is, it just embeds the alpha into your, your interactive viewport. And so in our case, instead of seeing the Corona background here, we're seeing Cinema 4D's viewport background. So essentially, what we did is we enabled straight alpha mode in our interactive viewport. Right, so that one is pretty straightforward. Uh, the next on the list, however, is the detail slider. And this one is pretty, pretty important because it essentially controls the resolution of your interactive viewport. So let me show you what I mean. Right now, if I open up uh, or better yet maximize this viewport window here, uh, and if I get real close to one of my pencils here, you can see that the resolution kind of still looks a little bit low res. We're, we're getting some of that low res look here. And it's essentially because the interactive viewport, whenever you start it, it's going to take the size of that viewport window into the account. And so that's going to essentially be your 100% value. And because we currently have it set to 50%, well, this just means that the current resolution is 50% of this viewport window here. So let me demonstrate what I mean here. If you're a little bit confused right now, if I say, for example, uh, turn the detail down to 10% and for this uh, to refresh, I need to restart my interactive viewport. So I'm going to click stop and then start again. Give it a second or two to come back. Well, now you're going to be able to see that, yeah, now this is really, really low resolution. But on the flip side, what it actually means is that it's really fast to refresh. And as you can see, this is 
This is working really fast now, and it, it really allows for a very interactive experience. Although, obviously, at 10%, you're not going to be able to see much. Now, I typically use lower values when I'm doing lighting, and I just want a quick, quick feedback instead of a more detailed image. So, for example, if I up this from 10% uh, to 100% and stop it and start it again, well, and now uh, the interactive viewport is going to take the resolution of this whole viewport window here, and it's going to render at that resolution. And now you can see this is crispy, clear, right? Because it's being rendered at the full resolution. And so essentially, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but essentially if you let this render until it's noise free, you could essentially take a screenshot and this would be exactly the same as your final render would be. Now, obviously at 100%, there's going to be a bit of a, you're going to have a bit of a slower refresh time here. And as you can see, the image is kind of slightly um, slower to work with, but still very, very interactive. Great. Uh, there is, however, one thing that you really, really need to pay attention to. And that is that if, for example, I will minimize this window, we'll bury it, make it a little bit smaller, restart my interactive viewport and pay attention how I'm going to restart it at 100%. Let's just give it a second or two to refresh here or bury it to initialize. There we go. And now if I bring up uh, the window to its full size, well, you can still see it kind of looks low res. And that is essentially because the, as I said before, uh, the interactive viewport, whenever you start it, it's going to take that viewport uh, window size into the account as 100%. So this is where we started our interactive viewport. And so this is going to be the 100% resolution image. So essentially when I make this bigger, I'm just upscaling it and this is not its native resolution. So pay attention to that. Right, now before we conclude this tutorial, there is one extra quick tip that I wanna show you. And that is, if you go under the window menu up here and click on this new view panel, you'll essentially be creating another viewport window. And so what's great about this is now we can have the interactive viewport running in here. We can even unlock it to this window. And this window, we can move to our second monitor or display, which you can't really see here. Or what we can also do is we can dock it anywhere we'd like in Cinema 4D. So for example, here. And so now we can use this big uh, sort of viewport here to do our modeling tasks and positioning of elements and stuff like that. But when we wanna fine tweak it or move it given this specific camera view here, well, I can do that here as well. And I can also see the rendered image. Right? And so this isn't a fully fledged substitution for the interactive render that is talkable, but you can still use it to help yourself out whenever it comes in handy, really. Right, so that's it for this tutorial. We hope you've enjoyed it and that you've learned something new. We'll see you in the next one.